Well, this is Yolanda with Conversations with Yolanda. I'm so excited about our, my guest that I have on today. You guys get ready. All of your excuses that you have had about working out and being fit, you're gonna to have to toss them aside after this conversation. So welcome ladies. I'm so excited to have you here with me today. Thank you, thank Hi. you. Hi. We are so excited to be here with you, Yolanda. Yes, thank you. you know, a lot of times we hear people talking a lot about fitness. And for me, it's the whole body, mind, body, and spirit. Absolutely. And I have been following you. We have not met in person, but I have been following you. I know Tina. Tina has about killed me working out yeah. <laughs> yeah. when I was living in Nashville. Yes. And it's just so inspiring to, to, to know your story. But I want those that are listening and those that will watch the to hear about your story and then talk about some of your successes you've had with clients. I know you're going to share a little bit about that. So if you'll start off just sharing a little bit about your background, your experience, and then we're going to dive into some other questions. Okay. Um, um, my name is Tony. I am a personal trainer. I've been training for about four years. Um, I struggled with weight issues as a child. I come from a family that, that has a history of, of high blood pressure, uh, being overweight, um, and all the problems that come with high blood pressure, the aneurysm, the strokes, and, and all of that. Seeing a lot of my aunts and uncles die prematurely, die what I felt was way too young, I decided early on that I wanted to live a different lifestyle. So um, I began working out, uh, tried various diets throughout the year, I, I, it, throughout my life, I should say. Um, now I am a vegetarian, uh, been training for four years, just been consistent with my workouts. I've, I, it has evolved a lot over the years because as I've gotten older, I'm currently 61, a few weeks away from turning 62, I've had to modify and make some changes, but it's all been for the better. And I'm just really just feel like I'm really getting started in a lot of ways, even, even at 61 years old. And I've had wow. struggles, struggles with food addiction, all of that, and, and sugar addiction, you name it. I have been there, done that. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a little bit about, about me, why I do what I do and why I'm so passionate about health and wellness overall. Yes, you just said something that, that stood out to me. You said, even at the age of 61, you've had to tweak and change. Because a lot of times we start, even with workouts, I've done it, I've started, and I'm like, why am I not losing weight? Right. I've been doing this workout. Can you talk a little bit about how important it is to switch it up, whether it's your diet or your exercise? Absolutely. Um, I mean, a lot of times too, we, we sometimes we do things that, that maybe they aren't necessarily working for us, or we're, we're, you know, like I was that person that did tons and tons of cardio, and I was actually getting bigger. And so I had to actually, I talked to some friends that were into strength, um, strength training and bodybuilding. And one of them suggested to me a couple of years ago, he said, why don't you cut back on the cardio and add in more weights? And I, at first I thought, oh my God, you gotta be kidding. But I did that. And in the course of two weeks, I automatically saw a change in my body. So sometimes you have to try something new. You know, you, you can be doing something. And like you said, it's not working. We have to be open enough to try something new. If you try one thing and didn't work, try something else. I mean, I have done everything from, from step aerobics to spinning to boxing. Some of those things really work well for me. Other things, it's like, mm, they don't work so well. So you have to be open to not be like, well, I'm only going to do this one thing. Like, for example, Glenda doesn't really like working out in the gym not but gym she right. loves to hike she loves to run she loves to walk that works for her right yeah. I go running I tell people if you see me running know that the police are chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly I ran in college in high school I speed walk now I love hiking yeah. as well and I'm in the Virginia DMV area so there's okay. so many places to hike. So wonderful. We just went hiking Saturday. See, I oh, love hiking, amazing. but I don't like just the regular walking and running. Not my cup of tea, but so you've got to find what works for you because I also okay. always say that the only workout that you're going to be successful with is the one that you enjoy doing enough that you keep doing it over and exactly. over. If you don't exactly. enjoy it, you're not going to do it. And so you're not going to have any success with that. So Find something that you love. Find two or three things that you love and stick with those things. Great. You just mentioned that um, Glenda, what Glenda loves to do. Dylan, tell me a little bit about your journey. I know you've done some work with Tony and you've been hanging out with her. Kind of tell me about your journey with just fitness. You know what? Um, 
I think even back in when I was a little girl, I've always been, it's like something was innate about exercising, team sports and things like that. So I've always had this exercise thing working out, you know, embedded in me. Um, but this last, during the COVID, I, I think, I think uh, Tony can also detest to that is that we've had a chance to kind of sit back and look at ourselves and really dig deep into, you know, like self-reflection. What, what is it that makes you tip, especially with our workouts? I get out there every single day, at least six days a week. And I go out and I go up the hills, I run, I smell the coffee, I smell the roses. I look at everything else around me. It's like, what have I been missing? Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's been all about being uh, consistent consistency, consistency, consistency. And like Tony said before, I'm not a gym rat. I like to be outside, but it works for her. Mm -hmm. you know? And I like to run. I like to walk briskly. Um, sometimes I will get in the gym with, with Tony. We'll do hula hooping. Let's talk about yeah, hula hooping. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hula hooping. Oh my God. Thanks to, to Tony. But it's not your normal hula hooping. I guess right. It's a that weighted hula hoop. It's actually. weighted. It's, it's, you know, ah. Ah, talk a little bit about that, Tony. So it's, it's, a, it's a weighted hula hoop. It's, it weighs like two pounds. Um, and you can actually get them from, from Amazon. But we, I saw the hula, hula hoop in the gym. And I thought, let me try this. Not the, oh, this is not the hula hoop I did as a child. Because I was out of breath when I got done. And so I did a little, I always like to research things before I recommend anything. And I actually did some research on hula hooping, the benefits of hula hooping. And ah. I was amazed to find that, that it burns calories, it burns fat, it strengthens your core as well as the back, also strengthens the hands, the hamstrings and the glutes and the quads because, you know, you're, you're really twisting your hips. Wow. And, your and so we actually start, I mean, started doing it. And I told her, I said, we gotta do, we've got to do a video what? and do a hula hoop. Yeah. It's so amazing. Fun. And I've, been, I've recommended it to some of my clients and they started doing it and they absolutely love it. So, wow. Again, that's thinking outside the box, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. being adventurous and just, you know, let me try this. I may like it. I may not I actually loved it. So we've been adding that into our workouts as well. Let's talk a little bit about COVID and the lockdown and kind of how that was for you and how did you support clients or even pick up new clients during that time? How was that for you? It, it was very hard for me because you have to understand prior to COVID, I was not only was I training clients. I was also spending anywhere from three to four hours in the gym myself. So when the gyms shut down, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I went into a depression because I, I immediately was like, although I'm training my clients at home virtually, I don't like training virtually. And I just yeah. I said, what am I going to do? And there were literally some days where I was getting up out of bed, training my clients and crawling back in the bed because I was depressed. I didn't work out for about a month. I mean, wow. it just, and, but then I didn't, I actually lost weight because I was so depressed and I was so full of anxiety that I lost like almost 10 pounds in a month, which is not healthy. Right. Um, so it was really hard for me at first. I lost about 10 clients. So that was hard. I mean, I just, and I thought, oh my gosh, what am, what am I doing? And I had to really dig deep um, inside and like, kind of like what Glenda said, you know, think about what is it that I want? And I'm thinking I can't allow you know, be, because life has changed and life isn't looking the way I want it to look, I've got to figure this out because I realized, I think about a month in, we're not getting out of this anytime soon. And I had to make the shift in here. Mm -hmm. And okay, you know what? The, the world that you're used to is gone. You've got to adjust or you're going to be having an adult tantrum for a long time because this <laughs> thing is and so I had to actually do some soul searching. And so now we went from the physical fitness to, I got to do some mental wellness here because, and I had to really just shift my attitude and I had to readjust. And I went from having like, at the time I was just kind of building my business up from transitioning from Nashville to LA. I had built up to about 14 clients, went down to four and then slowly started building back up, got up to about seven. And then over the last year, I really just decided I'm going to focus on my business. I'm going to focus on my health. I started, you know, um, working out again and went from the seven clients. Currently, I'm like at around 23. Wow. So that's it's awesome. Been, it, it's been a, a blessing, but the blessing was in me shifting my attitude. And exactly, I, because I had to really exactly. let go of what I thought my life should look like and how I thought God should bless me and have to let God do his thing. And once and I took God. my hands off of it and said, okay, God, you know what? I'm, I'm going to stop having this tantrum and let you just have your way. And then 
things just started turning around for me and my attitude got better because I realized, you know, you don't, you can't control this, but you can control your attitude towards it. You can control how you respond to what's going on. So it's, it's actually worked. I, I have to say honestly to my advantage, even though I do not like being in this pandemic, I still don't like it. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, exactly. but it's like, we have to learn to make the best with what we are, what we are given at the time. I, I tell everybody, I said, uh, God sent us all home. He put us all in time out. He was like, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, go like the, it's, yes, it's like the That's biggest the reset button. You know how you, like, you hit the yes, reset button yes. on your phone? I feel like God was like, okay, all of you need the reset button hitting your life. Exactly. You can exactly. shift your focus on, onto what's important. And I think it really has. It's like you take your, your eyes off of the material thing so much. And it really is. It, it's come down to your mental health, your physical health, your family yeah. and your friends, the yes. things that money yes. can't buy because so many people have lost their lives. So many people have lost loved ones or have, or have been sick. And you really realize the things that we were focusing on were not the important things at all. Exactly. 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 You said something about the mind. I always tell people the enemy goes after your mind first. He, he's going to attack your yeah. mind. So okay. mindset yeah. And I'd say I have a business clients here in the U.S. and internationally. And when I first started working with them, that's what I deal with. I'm like, we're not talking about business. Let's see where your mind is. Exactly. Because if your mind is not right and you don't make that mind it shift, matter. you cannot do anything else. Right. I, t I have clients that, that, you know, they're dealing with emotional eating and they'll tell me, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not going to eat carbs. I'm not going to eat. This. I said, yes, you are. I say, you, what you've got to deal with first is what is triggering you to go to these foods? I said, because it really isn't about the food. It's about something else in your life, exactly. some unresolved issues, whether it's from childhood or whatever is going on. You got to get to the root of that mm -hmm. because what's driving you to the donuts? What's mm -hmm. It's not really the donuts per se, but it's something in here. Yeah. And that's it's so important. Like you said earlier, it's not just the physical, but we need to be mentally fit. We need to be spiritually fit. We need to have balance in every area of our lives and not just, it's, 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 you know, it's good if you look good and you're strong and you're fit, but if you're jacked up up here and right. then, you, then you just look good, but as soon as exactly. you're down, it's like, oh, okay. Exactly. Uh, I was talking to one of my friends the other day and she was so concerned about her husband and he's gaining weight and and she talked about, he always eats all these snacks. And I said exactly what you said. I said, it's not about those snacks. It's not, yeah. I and, said, so you need to pray that God reveals to you what that is because it's, exactly. not, it's not those snacks. No, it's not the snacks. It, it's just, it's, it's, that's what he's choosing to mm -hmm. go to. But I, I, you know what, I, and, I, and I always tell people this, I said, we have to learn, especially for those of us that are believers, when we are going through things, we can't take our problems to the pantry or to the refrigerator. We have to take those, those problems to God. Yes. Because no matter what, if I go and eat six donuts, guess what? I'm, the problem is still going to be there. But now I have another problem. Now I just ate six donuts. You know what I mean? Eat on top of the Are you mad that you ate the six donuts? <laughs> It, that, and that's even a whole nother problem because now I'm feeling defeated. It's like the donuts won and I lost. It's like, right. oh my gosh, you know? So, so tell me, what was it for you when you decided I'm no longer going to allow myself not to be physically fit and mentally fit? What was that trigger for you? What was that a thing that made you see that I have to do something different? You know, I think honestly, for me, uh, one of the biggest triggers was, was seeing a lot of my family and, mm -hmm. and just, just, and even, even I had some younger cousins that, that passed away, um, in their thirties, um, from diabetes and just seeing, seeing that and seeing the toll, you know, that, that I'm watching my aunts and uncles, the toll that it took on them. I, I just, I thought about, I was talking to my brother, I will be 62 in a few weeks. My father passed when he was 64. Wow. So that's only two years yeah. older than what I'm yeah, about. And, and when I thought it was just very sobering um, for me. And then also, I think just just the way I felt um, that constantly feeling defeated, you know, constantly feeling like the food was winning and I wasn't and I wasn't winning. And that constant feeling of defeat and just wanting something different for myself, wanting a different outcome. And, and then also just realizing that even as I started working out, realizing that I had so much untapped strength in me. And, you know, I think a lot of times too, as females, we underestimate ourselves and feel like we can't do certain things and we can actually do a lot more 
than we realize. But a lot of times we talk ourselves out of stuff. And so I would challenge myself. I, you know, I, I tried boxing and I tried just various things just to see if I could do it. And I was surprised. Most of the times I, the things that I thought I couldn't do, I could do. Mm-hmm. Glenda, I know you, you tried some of the tips from Tony. Tell me about your weight loss journey and how was that for you? You know, I've always, like I said earlier, I've always worked out and it was just something that I did, but I was always struggling with the balance of nutrition mm. and exercise. And a lot of times I just wasn't quite getting there. I mean, I got there, but I, there was no, no, no turning point for me. But that turning point was when Miss Lady came back into my life from Nashville. <laughs> and I said, oh, but I just can't seem to get over the, over the hump here. What do I need to do? I said, I focus on proteins, on doing the veggies and all these kind of things. She goes, Linda, you don't have to you know, be that stringent about the whole process. Just make some little changes. You can have some corn on the cob. You can have some brown rice. I go, really? I can have that? And I can have my creamer too? That's not sugar free? <laughs> But I'm telling you, just those adjustments. And she sent me some like nutritional plans. I kind of looked them over. And I'm telling you, that was a turning point for me. I feel that I'm at my best, best shape that I've ever been in at 61. Why did it take so wow. long for wow. this woman to come yeah, into my You motivated life? me. You encouraging me. Uh, <laughs> so we are both here together, 61, yeah. getting ready to turn 62. And we're doing this together. And I'm just happy, happy to have her in my life. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about nutrition because people do, as African-Americans, we grew up, eat everything on your plate. Do not leave anything on that plate. You need to eat it all. Yeah. And now as adults, we're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Talk, talk yeah. a little bit about nutrition and kind of that balance for people. I, I think it's just important is, you know, really paying attention to your body and paying attention to your brain when you're eating and pay attention to when you're actually full and stop eating at that moment. It's not, you know, we, we, like you said, we were taught to eat everything on our plate. And, you know, a lot of times that worked to our disadvantage because we actually stretched our stomachs out of shape. We ate way more food than we needed to eat. And what I have done and what I have always tried to tell people to do is really eat slowly. Try not to eat distracted. Don't eat while you're watching TV or on social media. Yeah. Eat your food, enjoy the food, but eat slowly and pay attention to when you're full and stop eating then. Mm-hmm. And if you do that, a lot of times you find that you will maybe eat half of what you would have normally eaten in, in the past because we're, we're full and then we keep eating or if something is so good, mm-hmm. oh, it's so good. On, and then you continue to eat and you continue to eat and then, you're, and then you're just stuffed. And just one of the simple things even that I had Glenda do and it worked for her. And I have, I almost tell everyone this because people say, well, I'm not going to eat carbs. I'm like, no, you need to eat carbs. You need good carbs. You don't need carbs that are bad for you. Um, yeah. But it's just... A, a simple thing that I've done and that she's done is just not eating carbs in the evening because you have to really exactly. view carbs as like gasoline for your car. You need carbs for your for breakfast, for lunch, because you need that energy to get through the day. Well, now it's evening time. You're getting ready to hibernate. You're getting ready to go to sleep. You don't need energy to go to sleep. So yeah. just even eliminating the carbs at night mm-hmm. can make a huge difference in, in weight loss. And because it's just like a lot of times we want to, we tend to eat, you know, sometimes you eat a smaller meal during the day and you eat this big dinner, but it's like, no, you need to have a good breakfast, have a good lunch and have a smaller dinner, still mm-hmm. have something for dinner, but you don't need this huge meal at night unless you're going to play, you know, you're going to work out at night. Right. You know, but a lot of times we do the opposite. We eat this huge meal and then in two hours we're in the bed. Exactly. Exactly. That, that's great because people don't realize that they, they make these pledges. I'm not eating any sweets. Uh, I'm not eating any carbs. Gonna and they overdo it. They, you don't, you don't yeah. keep it. And I always, yeah, I always tell people, I said, when you say, the minute you say, I'm not going to eat something, I feel like you start thinking about how, how much you're going to miss it. And you actually sabotage yourself. Like if I said, mm-hmm. oh, I'm never going to eat sweets again. Guess what? You know, yes, I am. And, and, exactly. and I, you know, for me, I told someone, they said, oh, I'm not going to eat past eight o'clock. I said, so you must be going to bed at 730 every night. You right. are going to eat past eight sometimes. That's yeah. just unrealistic. Mm-hmm. What if you out and you don't get home in time for dinner? You're, exactly. you're not going to bed hungry. You're going to eat something. So I think sometimes we set ourselves up for defeat because we make unrealistic goals exactly. mm-hmm. and say what we're not going to do. And sometimes it's just, it's just not going to work into our daily schedule. Exactly, exactly. So for those that are just getting started, 
and haven't worked out at all in the last couple of years, <laughs> what would you recommend to them to do to just get started doing something? I mean, I was I recommend a few things, just something simple, walking. Walking is free. Walking doesn't, it, it doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to join a gym. You know, if there's a park near you, just go for it. Take a 30 minute walk, just start somewhere. If you want to do something at home, there are all kinds of uh, free workouts on, on YouTube where you could do it in the comfort of your home. Some people don't want to be around other people. They're not comfortable if they haven't been in the gym. And I understand that. So, you know, you can do something in the comfort of your home. There's yoga on YouTube. There's uh, strength training that you can do just using your body weight, simple workouts with uh, three and five pound dumbbells. So there's a number of things that, that they can do if, you know, if they don't want to join the gym. Of course, the gyms are open if they don't feel safe in going though, which I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. there's, you can get equipment from Amazon. I mean, I have a whole <laughs> slew of equipment. So there's a number of things that, that, that they can do. You can do exercise with bands. You can do you know, yoga on YouTube. There's no limit to what you can do. There's so many things out there. And a lot of the things are free. So you don't even have to spend any money. Exactly. And I think the pandemic, as much as we've hated it and still hate it, some of my friends in other countries, they're back on lockdown. I said, no, Jesus, we don't want to do that. I know, no. I know. We are not know. doing that. No. And so you, you had to pivot. So yeah. as a business owner, what are you seeing coming up for you? And then I want to talk a little bit about your book. Okay. What are you seeing differently in your sector, in this fitness sector that's really not going anywhere and it's going to continue to be in, in, in this space? I, I think the virtual training is going to continue to be a thing. Ironically, I started training virtually four years ago because I had a full-time job and that was the only way I could kind of get my foot in the door. Had no idea that two years later that would become so a lot, you know, when, when the pandemic hit, people saying, oh, I got to go virtual. I'm like, well, that's all I know how to do. And so a lot of my clients, though, have found that they want to stick with the virtual training versus going to the gym. Some of them aren't comfortable going to the gym. A lot of them, though, it's been a factor of convenience because what happens is they wake up, they're home. All they have to do is throw on their clothes, work out. When we're done, they're home. They don't have to right. drive back and get right. ready for work. Right. And now they can just shower and get to work. So a lot of them have, have found the <laughs> factor um, outweighs, you know, having to drive to the gym. Yes. And it also gives them some versatility because what I try to do with my clients is I try to tailor the workout towards them. So whether they have limitations, some of my clients have, you know, arthritis, some have lupus, some have limited mobility. I try to really structure it for that particular individual. I don't believe in a one size fits all type of thing because my clients range in age from 30 to 75. So wow. I can't have my 30 year old and the 75 year old doing with the 30 year old, my 75 year old can't get on the floor, right. you know? So I have to do exercises where she's either standing up or sitting down, but a lot of them, the, the convenience has been um, a factor. And it also just really helps to even cut down like on the commute time. For me, it helps me to keep my prices low because I'm not, I'm, I'm going to pay rent either way. So wow. I don't have the overhead of having the expense of That's an actual exactly. gym studio, which is a whole different expense in of itself. Um, but I think and for a lot of people, just even the safety factor, you know, you, you, a lot of these states are mandating masks for the gym, but the people aren't complying. The masks right. are their nose or they're down here. And you're just like, you know, I'm like I'm, that you are not covered. Cover your <laughs> So it's just like walking around with your underwear down and like, you know, what's the point? Like they're on your body, but it's not up. It's like, no, don't do that to us. Exactly, exactly. So a lot of companies have had to pivot in several sectors to do things that they normally wouldn't do. I'm working with companies that never thought their staff would work from home and they're keeping wow. some of them at home yeah. down on real estate that they had in selling it. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think it's open yeah. up. People realize yeah, you're paying sure. all this money for office space. And a lot of times the employees are being more productive at home than they were in the office. And, then, and on top of this, you're paying, you know, $10,000 a month for this office space. Well, if you don't have to, why would you do that? You're still getting right. paid. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's making, making us look differently at the things we got comfortable with, just like we get yeah. comfortable with doing a workout. And for me, what I run into sometimes is, I do the workout. I'm not pushing myself like if I'm with somebody. Right. <laughs> a trainer, like, you can and, do more than that. You can do, you, you yeah. can do 10 more of those. 
you know, sometimes you just need, like, I got one of my clients, she's my longest running client has been with me for the four years. And I mean, at this point, she could do the workouts on her own, but she said, she said, I need you. She said, if you don't show up, I'm not doing it. She said, I'm just being honest. And that for a lot of people, and I have a lot of clients tell me that they'd like, you know what? She said, I tried doing some stuff on my own. She said, who am I kidding? It's you know, the buddy system. It's the yeah. buddy system. Everybody needs yeah. to exactly. exactly. that. Just that little push. Mm-hmm. Because uh, talk a little bit about how important it is to have that partnership or that accountability in your life, whether it's your trainer or a friend, how important that is. I just, I just think it's, it's really vital that you have like-minded people around you, people that are, are doing the same thing, whether they're speaking into your life every day or not. Like I even like Tina and my crew in Nashville, yes. sometimes I would just think about them knowing they're at the gym, they're getting it done. And that will motivate me. It's just, it's important to have people that support what you're doing, mm -hmm. that, that um, are also, they don't necessarily have to be doing the same exact thing, but right. just are trying to live a healthier lifestyle. And just to have that, that camaraderie and that support and that push, sometimes, you know, we, we need to be motivated. Sometimes, you know, maybe we're not, we're not feeling our best that day. And it's like, man, you know, but they'll just say something, say, you know what, just do what you can. Mm -hmm. It's important to have that because um you know listen we can talk ourselves out of stuff and we can talk oh, ourselves yeah, out of time and, <laughs> all the and time. you know and like she may say like what are you doing did you work out a day not yet you know but I know she's not gonna ask me or if I see did you go for your walk today right you need that that little yeah. just encouragement to say you know what just get out there even if it's not your norm do something do something good for yourself right right so let's talk a little bit about your book. Okay. How did you come up with it and decide to write this book? I'm so excited for it. Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm excited about this book. And I'm going to tell you, this book has actually been two years in the making. But what really motivated me uh, to write this book was just being out sometimes. And, you, you know, especially in our age, you, you, I would hear men and women. Well, I'm, I'm 55. This is just the way it is. What? Uh, you know, and I would hear that over mm -hmm. and over and over. And I thought, and I said, well, no, it doesn't have to be like that. We don't have to give in to the fact that, oh, I'm 50 and, and I'm just going to be overweight. Or, oh, I'm 50. The high blood pressure comes with the territory. Or, oh, I'm 50. That diabetes runs in my family or whatever. And so I really started thinking about it. And I kind of started just writing some things down about my own journey and about how I, I was not going to allow my age to box me in and say, well, this is just the way it is. It doesn't have to be that way. Let me see what I can do if I just apply a little more pressure. And then what happened was I just began to, as my circle kind of grew and I was meeting more and more people within my age group that had had these miraculous uh, uh, wellness journeys, I thought to myself, I need to write a book about this because what happens is a lot of times too, if we're struggling with something, we feel like maybe we're the only one struggling. Yes. With yeah, yeah. And so I've got, you know, I've got people in here in the book that are ranging age from late thirties to, to um, the early seventies, male and female, wow. all have had different journeys. Some have, have, you know, gotten over diabetes. Some have gotten over um, thyroid problems and, and fibroids and just a myriad of problems. And I thought for myself, if people could just read this and understand that they are not the only ones and that, that, that there are so many people like them out there and that no matter where you are, whether it's whether you're dealing with health issues, whether you're dealing right. with issues, whether you're, you're 30 or 70, that it's never too late to just become a better version of yourself. That's so right. that's really sure. what this book, um, what inspired this book, because, you know, I, I would have people even tell me well, Tony, you make it look easy. And, and some people don't remember when I was overweight. And I said, well, I do. I do remember. I remember very well. And no, it's not easy. And so that was another source of inspiration because a lot of times, you know, we post these perfect pictures on social media and we post about how, you know, we worked out for two hours. We don't post about the day we laid up in the bed with the bag of cookies. Right. You know, yeah. we never post about that. And so I thought people need to read about real people, about real stories, about real struggles, and not these perfectly airbrushed pictures that we keep seeing on social media that make Thank us you. feel right. inadequate. Right. But the, and that's why even my, my journey, and I share that even while I was writing this book, I went through severe depression while I was writing this book. And I went through almost like a week or two period where I didn't work out and I was getting donuts every single day. Mm -hmm. And I even talk about that in here because people need I, to hear that yeah, the vulnerability because they feel like nobody's dealing with any of this 
Yeah. Everybody's, I said, we show our highlight reels on social media. It is not our real life. Like, do not take that and make it all of somebody. Yes. That's why I really, like I said, I'm very transparent in, in the book. Um, I'm very transparent about it because I want people to know that it is never too late. I don't care if you were in bed last night with a bag of chips. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Today yes. and start over. Yes. Um, you know, so I, over. like I said, I just, my real main focus with this book and my goal was just to inspire people that no matter where they are, get out there, make a change. Today is a new day. Don't worry about what you did yesterday. Um, you know, and don't feel like you're alone. You're not alone. We are Absolutely. in this. I don't sit around every day eating celery. There are some days you may <laughs> catch me with a cookie in my mouth. Right. It's okay. And it's okay. it's okay. And I'm not going to feel bad about it. Um, but, exactly. And so think, I mean, things happen. And, but this book is, um, that is really what my goal was for this book. I just want to inspire people that no matter where you are, it's never too late. Don't don't let your age, don't let you know your family history or whatever your it is stop you from just moving forward and becoming a better version of yourself. So that's awesome. How can they get the book? So the book is available right now. It's in pre-sales um, through September 11th on my website. Um, my website is truefaithfitness.com. And it's just you just click on the products tab, scroll down to the buy now button, and then Starting September 25th, which is my 62nd birthday, it will be also available, continue to be available on my website and on Amazon as well. So I'm just Great. excited. I've already ordered mine. I'm, I'm waiting on mine. I ordered mine. <laughs> the way, I mailed it out on Friday. So <laughs> and I said, I, I want to encourage people that are listening and watching. You know, a lot of times we make stuff sell out for celebrities. Yes, 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 yes. I love Tabitha. I love Tabitha. I love all that she does, but I want this book to sell out like her seasoning sold out. Oh, awesome. Thank you. And so I want to encourage those that are listening to click. I'm going to put the link in the bio of the, the podcast awesome. and YouTube. You guys go order it support but also it's not just going to be supporting tony it's going to be supporting yourself so i want to encourage them to get the book and tony how can they how can they reach you on and follow you on social media on uh, social media on um, instagram i'm under t class and the number one and then on facebook um i'm under tony t class noble or lewis noble and then i also have a business page on facebook which is under truth faith fitness and then also my website, truefaithfitness.com. Great. I'll put all of that information on the podcast uh, information site. And thank you so much for joining me. What is one thing you would leave to those that have listened to this conversation today that would encourage them? Um, you know what? I just want to say, most of us, we make time for everybody else. Make sure to make some time for yourself. You show up for work. You show up for your husband wife, family, friends, show up for yourself, schedule some time each day for yourself. That's just for you and treat that as a meeting. Don't, don't cancel on yourself, show up for yourself. Don't let anything or anybody change that. Make yourself a priority. You guys heard that show up for yourself, make yourself a priority. Tony, thank you so much. Thank you guys for joining me today. This was a great conversation. And I wish you all the best. And we're waiting for that book to sell out. Uh, Thank you, guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Yolanda. You're welcome.